Okay, so this is a, a welcome back visitor. This is the second part, or maybe third part, of this uh, video series on uh, technically what we call Lorenz's force. Lorenz's force. Um, you'll see that word pop up a few times. Um, it's just the force caused by a moving particle within a external magnetic field. Um, so last le video, we talked about using this formula to calculate the magnitude of the magnetic force acting on a particle. We use the left-hand rule, now determine the direction, or the right-hand, depending on what charge, if it's positive or if it's negative. So we use the hand rules to determine which uh, the direction. We use this formula here to determine the force, the magnitude of the force, and we put those together and get the overall force of the object. So there's a few questions here in the next few different slides here. I want you to try these out yourselves before going any further. So if you haven't done so already, I want you to pause the video and try them out. Okay, so welcome back. So hopefully you did try these out. Um, so what we have here, we have an electron here traveling, and based on this kind of three-dimensional picture, I can probably say that this electron is kind of traveling into the page. It kind of looks three-dimensional-ish to me, even though it kind of looks like it's traveling at 45 degrees. They kind of drew these magnets in a three-dimensional manner here. So I know it says in the question, determine the magnitude of the force. But because we have a picture here, we might as well try to determine the actual direction so we can actually calculate just the force. So uh, let's just look at this and let's say, let's use a hand rule to figure out what direction the force is. So what we have if uh, from the north to the south, we have our magnetic field, right? This magnetic field is going straight across, but this is going to weigh this picture. Uh, now we're going to use our magnetic field here and the direction of this particle to determine the direction of the force. So we have the particle traveling in towards the page. So we put a thumb towards the page. We have our magnetic fields going from right to left here. Oh, sorry, from left to right. Yeah, from left to right. So based on that, so my fingers are going that direction. Based on how this orientation is, my palm is upwards. Since my palm is upwards, that's the direction of my force. My force is going to be in the upwards direction there. Okay, so I know the force is upwards. Let's find the magnitude now. So what we have so far is we have a few things about this. What we know uh, is an electron. So we know it's mass. We may not need that number. I'm just going to write it down. This is one of our constants. Uh, we have the charge of an electron. You remember correctly, it was one, negative one E. And remember, an E is an elementary charge. So that's 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. And then we have our speed of 3.6 times 10 to the four meters per second. And we have our magnetic field. And you can see that this is the magnetic field. The units are in Teslas. So it's 4.20 Teslas. Yeah. So let's pull out the formula for this, our FM formula from the previous slide to calculate the magnetic or the magnitude of the magnetic force. We take the charge, we take the perpendicular speed, we take the magnetic field, I don't care about the direction here, and we just ties them all together. Okay? So you pull out your calculator, you punch them all together. So it's 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19, times 3.6 times 10 to the 4, times 4.2. So we get a magnetic force of 2.4. I got three sig digs here, so 2.42 times 10 to the negative 14 newtons. Because from the picture, we actually know the direction. I could put those two together and create an overall force. Oh, not down, that's upwards. There we go. Uh, so the calculation is pretty easy. There's no constants or anything, like a Coulomb's constant. It's just, just QVB, charge times uh, speed times magnetic field. So let's go through a few more of these. So a, in this case, we just want to determine the magnitude because I don't have a picture this time. So we're just going to use the magnitude of the deflecting force on the proton. So I'm just looking for FM. So I'm looking for that FM. So I put those absolute values around it because I don't care about the direction. 
So we have a proton here. You notice the charge of a proton is the same as an electron, but it's positive. Uh, what else do we have here? We've got the speed, 3.5 times 10 to the 4 meters per second. And it's traveling perpendicular, so that's good, through an external magnetic field that is 4.2 times 10 to the negative 4 Teslas. So we're just going to plug those into the formula. QVB, moving perpendicular there. Um, so essentially just the same numbers as the last one, slightly different on the times 10 to the negative stuff. Uh, it's just a bunch of my calculator here. Do, 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 do. So we get this one, we get 2.35 times 10 to the negative 18 newtons. We don't know the direction. There's no pitch here, so I can't determine direction on this one. So that's all we can do in that. Okay, so we have this ion here. Now this ion is traveling not quite perpendicular to the field. It's kind of traveling into the page a little bit, but you can see the picture here that's moving at 30 degrees. So I want to know what part of the velocity is actually traveling perpendicular. So I'm looking for this velocity here that's perpendicular, but not the velocity that is parallel. It's kind of a weird looking picture here. So this is a 90 degrees here. 90 degrees here. So what we have in this question, based on what we have, this speed here, this 2.3 times 10 to the 5 meters per second, is the, the hypotenuse of its speed. I need to determine what is the actual perpendicular speed, not the parallel speed, because the parallel speed doesn't determine the force. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for the deflecting force on this ion. Um, what do we have here? This is looking at some of the numbers that are covered up my face. So uh, let's just figure out what we have here. So what we have, we have charge. Okay, that's just a scalar quantity, so there's no direction on that charge. You know, so that's looks about two times the size of an elementary charge. All right. Uh, we have the speed, and not the perpendicular speed, but this is the hypotenuse speed. We'll have to do something with that, so maybe I'll think about breaking that up into its components, its perpendicular and parallel speeds. Uh, we have the magnetic field here, so 2.2 times 10 to the negative 1, and we're going at 30 degrees. Right. So what I want to do for the speeds here is I want to figure out what is the perpendicular speed and what is the, the parallel speed. I don't really need the parallel speed to do this because the formula for this is going to be Q V perpendicular B. All right, so I'm looking just for the perpendicular speed. So I'm not too concerned about this one here. All right, so I go back down to my picture here to find the perpendicular speed, because this is at 30 degrees here. It doesn't quite look like it based on this picture here. That's 30 degrees. That means this angle here is also 30 degrees, based on some rules that we have about parallel or parallel lines. If this is 30, this angle down here is also 30. Those would be the same. Okay, so we know this is 30. And what I want to find across, I want to find this perpendicular, which is across the triangle from the 30, because that's across the triangle. We call that the opposite. So this would be sine 30 degrees. We're looking for the opposite. We have the hypotenuse. So we just rearrange it. And we're going to punch it in my calculator. Um, doo -doo -doo. If you know anything about sine 30, this is just technically a half of that number. So I get, when I get my calculator is 115,000 meters per second. Okay, so now I know my perpendicular speed. I'm going to use my perpendicular speed here to determine um, the force. I'm just going to plug it all into the formula at the bottom of the page there. So this, this times its charge times the field. So I get a force. You notice that all these forces are relatively small. Is that three six, yeah. 
times 10 to the, but that doesn't mean that the acceleration is going to be small. It's just that because the mass is really small, you don't need that much force to actually accelerate it too much. So there's my force. Um, based on the picture here, I can think of just using my hand rule. Because it is a positively charged particle this time, go back here, this was a negatively charged particle. Because this is positive, I'm going to use my right hand. My thumb is going to go into the page towards my face here. My fingers are going to go this direction because that's the direction of the magnetic field. So that's the magnetic field there. And so my force is downwards in this one. So if I were to draw a force, it'd be down. So maybe I could put this on here. I think it only asked for the magnitude, so I didn't really need to find the direction, but there was a picture, so I might as well use it. All right, so we have a negatively charged particle here traveling from west to east along the Earth's surface at the equator. Now, I say at the equator because at different parts of the Earth, the fields are kind of going in weird directions. Like if I were to, at the North Pole, remember if I was at the North Pole, uh, that's where I would be the south. My field lines would generally be going towards this the surface of the planet because they're coming back downwards. So remember when you draw this picture out of the Earth, what does this look like? So here's the Earth. Uh, here's my North Pole. Okay. Remember, they, the planet is technically kind of slanted a bit, tilted. That's why we have uh, some seasons. There's like... Right. That's why it's summer sometimes for us and then... Uh, winter and other times because it depends on how the planet is tilted towards the sun. Now we have here, it's spinning around this axis here. Now, if you remember what we did before, the magnetic field along the surface of the planet, so this is outside the planet here, the magnetic field on the surface of the planet was running this way because that's the way the compass was pointing, right? So along the surface of the planet, it's going this direction. Now, for the magnetic field to be going that direction, the, these are pointing towards the top part here. So this is going up, 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 and then it's coming down, up, 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 and then down. These are going up and then down, up and down. There's other ones out way out here that are doing the same thing. Okay. So they're going down. They're pointing towards the top of the planet up here. And they're coming out from the bottom. So this is what their kind of magnetic field looks like here. Coming out from the bottom, pointing towards the top. So that means because the, they're going into the top, that's where the south is. And because they're coming out of the bottom, that's where the north is. So that's where my magnetic north is, and that's where my magnetic south is. My magnetic north is actually at the geographical south. My magnetic south is at the geographical north. So they're kind of opposites of each other. Now that's important to know which direction the field lines are going because if I'm saying my charged sphere is traveling from west to east, so let's put a little compass here and never eat shredded wheat. My charged particle, let's just say that's going to be black here, is traveling from west to east. So my charged particle is here. It's a negatively charged particle traveling from west to east. So that's the direction my negatively charged particle is going. I don't know exactly uh, uh, if it's going to be an electron or not, but I just know it's a negatively charged particle. So I'm going to use my hand rule now. Because it's a negatively charged particle, I'm going to use my left hand. I'm going to turn my thumb in the direction it's moving. My fingers are going to go in the direction of the magnetic field. So all my red lines here, those are my magnetic fields. So my fingers are going to go in that direction. And then I look at my palm and think, okay, which way is my palm? It's going towards my face. So my palm is going towards my face. On this picture here, there's a force acting this direction. Oh, I just deleted my... There's a force acting that direction. Put the electron back in there, or my negatively charged particle. Okay, so it's going that direction. The force is acting here down towards my face towards the towards the page into the page 
So down towards the face, which actually means it's going downwards towards the surface of the planet. Um, you can do that here. It's like if I'm traveling from west to east, you can say that the electron, if it was over here, was traveling this way. So if I was traveling that way, my thumb's going towards my page, and then I can see with my palm, my palm is pointing this direction. So there's a force on the electron if it was traveling around the Earth like this. The force is actually towards the surface. So which direction is magnetic deflecting the magnetic deflecting force on the sphere? I could say in this case, towards the surface of Earth. There we go. So knowing that the, the poles, the magnetic north and magnetic south are very important. That where they are on the picture is very, very important. Just add a new page back. I just want to see something. Uh, yeah. So let's do the next three questions here. So if you haven't already, pause the video, try these questions out, and come right back. All right. Welcome back. So uh, let's see what we have here. We have a helium atom. Uh, it has a charge of 2 plus, which really gave us the charge here. It's 2 times the elementary charge. We have a mass. It's injected at a certain speed perpendicular to a region that has a uniform magnetic field of 3.2 Teslas. What is the magnitude of the deflecting force? So they're just looking for Fm again. Now, there's going to be a couple parts to this. There's going to be a part A, a part B, and there's a part... Oh, there's only a part B on this one. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to use this force. So to remember to calculate that, you're going to go Q times V perpendicular times the magnetic force. And we have here, we got perpendicular speed, so that's good. We have the magnetic force. So we have everything we need. And we got the Q up there. Uh, the mass might be for later. We'll deal with that. Um, also, just to mention, pops up later on, a helium ion is an alpha particle, technically. Okay. You know, it's the same charge and the same mass as an alpha particle. Uh, we'll use that mass later. So I'm just going to punch these numbers into my calculator. And we get a force, a magnetic force of three point, and I want uh, three sig digs, 3.17 times 10 to the negative 12 newtons. So I just punched all those numbers in. There's no weird units like. For Teslas, it should always be written in Teslas, not milliteslas or microteslas. 3.3 Teslas is quite a bit. Uh, speed has to be a meter per second. Uh, coulombs has to be in coulombs, not just microcoulombs or anything. And obviously mass has to be in kilograms for physics, but we didn't use that here. So we have this number. What I'm going to do with this number is I'm going to bring it to the second question. So I need this force number. I'm just going to rewrite that force number. I have some extra decimals here. I'm going to use them all. Uh, we have the mass, which I'm going to use as well, probably in this question. I think it was to the negative 27. Let me just double check. Yep, to the negative 27. Okay. So if this deflecting force causes the ion to travel in a circular arc, remember that when um, an ion so this is a two plus ion here, travels into a magnetic field, it's gonna be deflected in a circular matter because as it enters the field, and say this is a positively charged particle, so it's traveling that direction, the field is inward, it's gonna be forced upwards here because my field is going into the page, my particle is going from uh, left to right there, my force is upwards. So there's going to be a force acting on this particle right here, upwards, FM. And because of that, the direction this particle is, going to, is actually going to change slightly, and then the force will act in that direction. So it's going this direction. That's the speed. The field is into the page. So this, these little X's are the field lines, right? Um, so the force is now acting this way, and then it's going to change direction again, change direction again, change direction again, and then it's going to go into kind of a circular motion here. Yeah, it's going to go in this direction. And because the force and the direction of the particle are always perpendicular, 
this force will only change the direction and not the speed. And because of that, it's going to be uniform circular motion. So if it's uniform circular motion and the force here are always acting towards the center, the FM can be labeled as the FC. So remember that um, we have the absolute values on this because the force, the direction is always changing, so we can't really deal with direction here. But the FC, if you remember correctly from math or physics 20, the FC is a net force of all the forces acting towards the center. So when we did it in physics 20, we said, okay, that was gravity. No other forces other than gravity. In this case, it's FM. Uh, we ignore the effects of gravity here because the ion is really, really small. So I'm not really too concerned about that. So I can say FM is equal to FC. What I know about FC is I can go M times AC. Like remember any force is M times A because we're talking about A or centripetal force here. I talk about centripetal acceleration. And FM, because there's a charged particle moving in the magnetic field, I can calculate that FM by this formula here. Right? Uh, I want to know what the radius here. So I want to find out what R is eventually. I have all this information above me to do this. I already had the FM, so I don't have to do all of this calculation. So I have this already calculated here. So this I have the FM already calculated. So I'm just going to leave that as FM. All right? We have M times AC. And if you look at your formula, there's two formula, formula sheets, sorry. There's two formulas for AC. You got V squared over R or the other formula for AC, which is four pi squared R over T squared. Now that one has period. Uh, there's no period in this question. We have speed in this question too. So that's speed, which I need for this was three times 10 to the six meters per second. Okay, so here's my formula. What I'm gonna do now is just gonna rearrange it for my radius here. So mv squared over fm. If you did leave the formula with the qvb part, you notice that the speeds here would kind of cancel out. I'd have a simpler formula, m times v divided by q. B. Or I could use the FM over here in that formula. It's up to you. Uh, they both give you the same answer. So let's just see what we have. So we've got 6.65 times 10 to the negative 27 times 3. I'm using the first formula there. So 3 to the power of 6 squared divided by that force that we had from previously. So I get a radius of 0.0. .0 one, and I think I had three sig digs from before, three, eight, nine meters. So 1.89 centimeters would be the radius. And there we go. Uh, if you haven't tried it already, uh, pause the video and try to figure out what this one is. Uh, we're trying to find the magnetic deflecting force that will balance the gravity of the the force of gravity here, because you notice that the the mass of this ion is a little bit larger. You could probably do the same thing if it was an electron as well. Here we're going to have to deal with gravity because I want to balance it out. So if you haven't tried it, stop the video. Okay, so hopefully you tried this question out. Now to do this question, you have to think about what what is it asking? It's asking... I want to balance out the deflecting force. Balance the gravitational force here. I want to know, to do that, we'll travel in a straight line. So remember to travel in a straight line because without any other forces, a magnetic force will cause this particle to move in a circular motion. So if I want to travel in a straight line, I need something to kind of counteract that. So if I look at this particle here, let's imagine this particle is traveling into the page. It is a positively charged particle. So if I use my right hand here, got the magnetic force going that way. I got my particle going into the page. My magnetic force 
acting on this particle is traveling upwards. But I also have gravity pulling the particle downwards. So if I didn't have the gravity, this would travel in a circular motion upwards. If I didn't have the magnetic force, it would travel in a sorry, uh, projectile motion, parabolic motion downwards. It's, that's the difference between the two. Magnetic force causes a circular motion. Gravity causes a projectile motion, like parabolic, but they can still balance each other out. Initially, if these two forces have the same magnitude, they're obviously going in the different directions from the picture that I drew up up there. So I want to know uh, what's the speed this particle would have to go at to make sure that these two forces end up being the same. So force of gravity, I can calculate that pretty easily, just mass times gravity. I'm, just, I'm not worried about direction here, so I'm just worried about m times g. I'm not worried about downwards. Uh, to calculate this one over here, qv perpendicular b. Uh, let's see what we have. So we have the magnetic field right here. So that's what we have the B value. That's in Tesla's. You notice that? Uh, we have the Q, 1.6. So it's just an elementary charge. Uh, what else do we have? We have the mass. Okay. We have gravity, we know that, so 9.81. We're going to assume this experiment's done on Earth. Uh, I put down meters per second squared. It probably should be written as uh, newtons per kilogram, but they're both the same, um, technically. I think that's everything we need. So over here, I just want to find out what is the perpendicular velocity have to be. So it's m times g. I'm going to divide the q and the b over. I got all of this stuff over here. Yep. So my perpendicular velocity, so I'm just going to punch in my calculator now, 2.01 times 10 to the negative 26 times 9.81 divided by the charge, 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. And I also want to divide it by the Tesla, 6.32 times 10 to the negative 5. So I have a velocity, it's a pretty slow velocity here. One point or zero point zero one nine five meters per second. Now if we can go through the unit analysis to determine is it actually supposed to be meter per second. All my units there were in proper units like Teslas, coulombs, and kilograms. So I'm just going to assume that the answer should be in meters per second. 